Hey guys and welcome to a brand new episode of Red's FX. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that's long overdue in my opinion and that's the best VFX and editing specs for a PC. Or the best PC specs for a VFX and an editing machine. You, you, get my, you get my flow. To make a whole tutorial series over three seasons of uh, VFX tutorials and not once talk about the actual specs you need for a laptop or a PC that's going to be running these um, effects, it's quite ludicrous. And so today we're going to be talking about uh, the best specs that you can have for a VFX PC and an editing PC or vice versa in a laptop. And these are specs basically that's not top of the range but it's specs that makes you or allows you the freedom to follow along with my tutorials without wanting to grab your PC or laptop and smack your grandma over the head out of frustration and that got really violent. So before we dive headfirst into this, I'm gonna make two things very clear. First of all, I'm not a tech expert. I know what this video is gonna have a lot of people in the comments telling me how I'm a complete dingus, how my head looks like a banana shaped pear and how I don't know what I'm talking about at all. The answer to that is yes, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is just based on my own experience. So don't take what I'm saying as gospel and go immediately and listen to what I'm saying. First of all, listen to what I'm saying. I think I do know a little bit of what, what I'm talking about because I've obviously gone through these motions myself when I was building my own VFX in editing PC. And uh, I think it can run the programs pretty well. Um, obviously, uh, I'm not obviously a tech expert. I didn't do IT. Uh, there's lots of people that know a lot more than me. So take what I'm saying as sort of a guideline, then go to your own experts, local experts, uh, online, stuff like that. Do your own research and then come up with the ideal specs for you. And that brings us to number two of uh, the warning before this video starts. When I say best, I mean the best for you because everyone's PC or uh, best PC is ideal for them because I may have a budget the size of a, uh, a cheese sandwich and you might have the budget the size of uh, one sock. It's different. See, one's obviously more. I'll let you figure out which one that is. So keep in mind when I say the best PC or laptop, I don't mean the perfect one. I mean the best one for what we have to work with, for what you have to work with. If your budget is two paper clips and lollipop, that's what you have to work with. Build the best one you can with what you have to work with in your budget. Not the best one that Billy can build. Billy being the kid who buys three Xboxes so he can play with himself. <laughs> play. <laughs> Does that even make sense? So let's talk about laptop versus PC. Um, when it comes to a laptop, the pros here is that it's mobile. So if you are someone who travels a lot, someone needs to be editing on the go, obviously you're gonna go with a laptop because you can't be lugging a huge PC around. Although laptops are generally more expensive, especially if you compare the parts in the laptop and you take those same parts and put it into a PC, generally you're paying less for the parts in a PC compared to a laptop. And obviously that's because of the mobility that a laptop gives you. But if you're like me and you stay cooped up in your room as if it's like your own bat cave, like a hermit, you really don't need to be spending, spending so much money on a laptop and you'd rather put those funds towards a better PC because obviously it's a lot cheaper and sometimes faster. But putting aside the whole PC versus laptop, let's say you've decided which one you're gonna get based on your own needs, which specific areas do you want to look at for the machine? So obviously VFX is a more intensive workload for the computer than a uh, video editing is, and they require different things. But if we're looking about in the middle ground, something that can handle a program like HitFilm, uh, a program that can do editing on a timeline, and they also do VFX compositing with layers, somewhere in the middle. So let's talk about that. So the four main areas you wanna look at, processor, RAM, graphics card, and hard drive. So starting off with the processors, this is gonna be the quickest thing I ever tell you. I'm working on Intel. I know some guys work on AMD. To be honest, I really never even dip my water in the AMD pool. It's too complicated for me to, for my life. Intel seems simple enough. Most people recommend Intel. Not crapping on AMD people. Please don't attack me for that. Um, if you like AMD, cool. I just don't know anything about it. Basically, if you were um, going with Intel processors, I would say go i7. It's the best processor you can get that's not extremely expensive and over the top. It's a bit pricey, but it's definitely worth it for smooth running. If you don't want to go as high as i7, I would say go i5. I'm breaking it down extremely simply. I'm not going to go into the uh, lower cores and all those other types of processors. Keeping it simple, if you want to have a really smooth, go i7. If you want to have smooth, but you really don't have the money for an i7, go i5. Simple. Moving on to graphics cards. Now, graphics cards are important because they help to render certain files and they also do a lot to give you smooth playback when you're editing. No one wants to press play to see what you've just done and have a choppy video and then you can't even, you have to do constant RAM previews. So graphics cards, if you have a good one, it allows smooth playback and also helps render certain aspects of your files. The tricky part about graphics cards is that there's always new ones coming out. From my research that I've done, NVIDIA seems to be the best one, especially the GTX series. 
Um, I can't really tell you guys which specific one to get, but myself personally, I have a GTX 1060. I think it's a six gigabyte or something like that. Um, so there's definitely people out there who know a lot more about graphics cards than me. Um, I know next to nothing about graphics cards. All I know is that Nvidia was really good. The GTX is a really good series. Also, there's lots of benefits such as CUDA cores and stuff like that, a whole bunch of jargon. But for me, I have the GTX 1060. It's really affordable for the speed that it gives you. I've had no problems with playback or rendering since I've upgraded to that from my laptop. Um, so I would say go for that one. If you guys want something that's affordable, that's not gonna break your budget, that's only gonna cost you about one paperclip, not two. And um, that's uh, generally an all around good graphics card. Although if you're looking for other options, definitely hit up some websites and, in and do some internet searches on YouTube. And it's definitely worth uh, reading into and understanding more. Myself though, I went 1060. Moving on to RAM. What RAM does is basically caches files and helps you uh, do previews. So you know that little square button in HitFilm that you click for a RAM preview or you can do an After Effects in HitFilm as well? It's using your RAM. So obviously the more RAM you have, the smoother your playback is gonna be when editing. So most programs say that the minimum amount of a RAM that you need is about four gigabytes, but that's barely scraping the surface. I would say definitely go eight gigabytes for a comfortable editing process. Although if you do wanna spend a little bit more money and you wanna dip into a little bit more, I would say go 16 gigabytes. If you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, I wouldn't go higher than that unless you're doing some really intensive like Avengers re rendering or something like that. If you are working on a little bit lower budget and you're going with an i5 processor maybe, go with 8 gigabytes. 4 gigabytes, you can get away with it, but you're really pushing it. Moving on to the last section, which is hard drives. Now you wanna have lots of hard drive space to store video files and preview files and stuff like that on your PC. But you don't wanna just have hard drives, you wanna have fast hard drives, if that makes sense. Let me explain. SSD drives or solid state drives, those are the really thin ones, are much faster than the traditional um, RPM uh, hard drives because they don't have a disk inside of them, they're solid. That's what they call solid state drives. So you definitely wanna invest in one like that. They're also smaller and quieter, so they don't make as much noise as the RPM drives. And general rule of thumb, you wanna have a one terabyte minimum. Um, this gives you a lot of space to work with, so you don't have to constantly dump files onto external hard drives. You can keep most of it on your PC. Although what I would suggest is when you're done with a specific project, move it onto a hard drive. Um, if you do wanna have a lot of, uh, uh, you wanna have, take it up to the next step, I would say get a 500 gigabyte SSD drive for all of your programs and your OS operating system and then have a one terabyte drive just for your video file. Anyway guys, that was just a few tips I have for building a VFX or editing PC. Let me know if you're building one down below and what you're doing with it. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Remember, I don't know all, I don't know everything. Don't attack me, I won't like it, don't hurt my feelings, please. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications, follow me on Twitter and all that jazz, and I'll see you guys in the next video.